Hi, I'm Ben Shapiro, and this is Reality Check. Everything you know about Michael Brown's a lie. The media, the politicians, the race baiters, they all told you the story of an innocent, young, unarmed black teen, the gentle giant, murdered in cold blood by a vicious white cop representing the evil establishment. Al Sharpton, who's always the first guy on the scene when a black person is killed by a white guy, or, in the case of St. Trayvon of the Blessed Hoodie, a white Hispanic, Describe Brown as a, quote, gentle giant as well. Over at Daily Coast, a writer described Brown thusly, a big guy who his family called their gentle giant built to be a high school football player direct from central casting, but Mike was too timid for the sport. According to friends and family, he had never been in a fight in his life. CNN, the Daily Mail, all of them called him a gentle giant. And the man who deprived the world of this gentle giant was... Of course, Officer Darren Wilson. Originally, we were told that Wilson shot Brown from behind after pulling over the gentle giant for walking in the middle of the street, a situation President Obama would later term walking while black. Supposedly, Wilson pulled the six foot five, 289 pound Brown through his driver's side window, but Brown then escaped and ran away from this mad emissary of police brutality. Wilson then allegedly shot the fleeing Brown from behind, at which point the unarmed Brown turned around, raised his hands in the universal sign of surrender, and perished in a hail of bullets. Here's the reality. All of this was a lie. The first crack in the myth of St. Michael, the gentle giant, came in the form of a security tape, taken just minutes before the fatal confrontation with Officer Wilson. According to police reports, the gentle giant, who had never been in a fight and was too timid to play football, grabbed a small attendant and slammed him into a display case. He also stole a box of Swisher Sweets, which are cheap cigars. The next crack in the St. Michael story, the New York Times reported that Michael Brown was, quote, no angel, the report explained he dabbled in drugs and alcohol, which presumably is why he stole the Swisher Sweets, since Swisher Sweets are routinely used to smoke pot. Indeed, Brown's system was chock full of THC during the incident with Officer Wilson. Autopsy later showed. The New York Times report also explained that Brown had, quote, taken to rapping in recent months, producing lyrics that were by turns contemplative and vulgar. Well, here's a sampling of Brown's music called by Gateway Pundit. My favorite part is when they bodies hit the ground. I soak them up like I'm wringing out a sponge. Talking down, make me shoot off your whole tongue. The words of the Blessed Saint. The media and politicians cried bloody murder when this information began to tarnish the candlelit altar they'd built for St. Michael. Just because Brown had strong arm robbed a convenience store while high and cut some vile rap videos didn't mean he deserved to be shot, which of course was true. But the rest of the mythical tale of the martyrdom of Michael Brown quickly began falling apart as well. Officer Wilson's side of the story began to come out in dribs and drabs. After pulling Brown over, Wilson said, Wilson tried to get out of his car. Brown then shut the door on him and pushed himself through the driver's side window. He went for Wilson's weapon, whereupon Wilson fired the gun in the vehicle. Brown ran. Wilson chased him. Brown then turned around and charged Wilson, whereupon Wilson shot him several times. According to the Washington Post, quote, more than a half dozen unnamed black witnesses have provided testimony that supports Wilson's accounts of the events. Blood spatter analysis, shell casings, and ballistics tests also support Wilson's account of the shooting, the Post sources said. Now, a new autopsy report revealed by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, which, by the way, was the same newspaper that originally termed Brown a gentle giant, showed that Brown's body had a graze wound on his thumb. The wound contained matter, quote, consistent with products that are discharged from the barrel of a firearm. That can only happen at close range. So close, in fact, that there was no stippling, a patterning of gunpowder that won't appear within an inch of the gun barrel. In other words, as San Francisco medical examiner Dr. Judy Melanick said, quote, this guy's reaching for the gun. The autopsy backs up the altercation at the car as well. Brown's skin was found on the exterior of the vehicle. CNN reports that blood from Michael Brown was found on Wilson's uniform, police car, and gun. The autopsy even shows Brown wasn't shot with his hands up. According to the autopsy report, the gunshot wound to Brown's upper dorsal right arm demonstrated that the direction of the shot was slightly upward, backward, and leftward. That means, according to Melanick, the shot traveled from the back of the arm to the inner arm, which means Brown's palms could not have been facing Wilson. The rage continues, of course, because facts don't matter when myths have already taken root. Benjamin Crump, the Brown family lawyer, he was also the family lawyer for the Martin family, he said that, Family and supporters will not be persuaded by the autopsy report or eyewitness statements, according to the Washington Post. And of course, local politicians have pledged the evidence won't change anything either. Meanwhile, the disciples of Michael Brown pay tribute to his gentle giantness by fighting over how to capitalize on his supposed martyrdom. Michael Brown's mother, Leslie McSpadden, 
reportedly got into a fight with Brown's grandmother and cousin when she found them selling Michael Brown merchandise. The altercation ended, apparently, with another unnamed person smacking Brown's cousin in the face with a pipe or a pole, resulting in his hospitalization. The suspect then stole a box from the scene containing some $1,400. But never mind. The legacy of Michael Brown, gentle giant, will go on. Another martyr has joined the racial testament. Another fake black mark on white racist police forces everywhere. And the left's aggressive construction of the myth of St. Michael the Gentle Giant ensures that more young black men will see police as the enemy, that confrontations will escalate, and that the left will have many more future opportunities to add to their perverse canon. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or click here to give a quick donation.